what is up welcome to my channel so for today's video I'm going to be doing a little review swatches and tutorial on the new Norvina palette by ABH everybody and their mother has reviewed this palette so it's kind of redundant for me to have another review of it but you know what are you even a beauty youtuber if you don't review this palette <laughs> anyways I just thought I would give you my useless two cents on this guy and you know give you a little tutorial on this look that I already have like two tutorials on <laughs> I don't know why I love a pink crease and a purple lid. I'm just, I'm all about it. But anyways, let's go over the basic facts of this palette. Like all the ABH palettes, it is $42. You get 14 shades, seven like really intense metallic colors, and then seven more sheen to matte colors. Of course, you see the more purple theme going on here. I believe it's in their permanent line or going to be in their permanent permanent line, excuse me. Um, it is currently not available at Sephora, but it will be very soon. And of course, Norvina, Claudia, Anastasia's daughter, this is kind of her dream palette. This is her aesthetic in a palette. And if you don't know me, you're about to know me and you would know that I love purple eyeshadows. It's one of my favorite eyeshadow colors to work with. So when I saw that she was coming out with this guy, it was going to be mine, basically. So really quickly, let's go over the packaging and details like that from this palette. So it's the typical ABH palette packaging in this velvet, you know, case. It says Norvina. I mean, you're probably sick of seeing this palette, am I right? <laughs> but it's a beautiful lavender color and I love lavender. And you open it up and you see, I mean, <laughs> you see this, right? Now when I saw it, it actually quite reminded me a lot of the Huda Beauty Desert Rose, but it's really not that similar. But I got Desert Rose vibes from it, but not the same. I'm really quickly just going to go straight into the swatches for you. So what's on my arm right now is the top row of the palette. So the next swatches here on my arm are the bottom row, of course. Yeah, so I mean, while I'm talking about that, let's talk about kind of the layout issues with this palette. Now, I was watching a video, I will link it, where she basically kind of redid where the colors went that made it a much more user-friendly palette and made it a little bit more inspiring and how to wear it. So some of these colors are just kind of in random places, but the way they did it was, like they said, these two colors are good together. Summer should be with incense. Soul should be with Celestial, like these two together, these two together, these two together. Um, these two are good together. It's just something like that, which I think would make it much more user-friendly, inspiring, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they definitely could have mixed it around, in my opinion. I think that would be a really great change to the palette, but that's just, that's just me being picky. <laughs> Formulation-wise, these two shades here, a little weird. They're not matte. They have kind of a weird shimmer to them. It's not even a sheen. It's a, like a weird shimmer mixed in with the powder. Um, Soul, I wasn't too crazy about formulation-wise, but it is kind of that matte purple where they're just hard to formulate, man. Like, it is what it is. It's the name of the game. Yeah, it's kind of patchy and dark in areas of my eye, and I kind of had to work with it. I didn't dislike it, but... It really it's not that great of a formula could have personally done without these neutral shades which i know they did to make it wearable however if you're gonna go with, with a purple palette like just go all out you know this palette is most definitely missing like matte purple crease shades like girl i need a matte eggshell a matte purple a matte magenta just something of that nature i think would really make it such a much more unique palette. That being said, if you're a neutral wearer who's trying to step outside the box, girl, this is perfect for you. But, you know, me, a makeup lover, purple lover, this palette could have gone in a whole different direction. That being said, like, I'm not hating on this palette. Anastasia, honestly, they don't have my favorite eyeshadow formula. If you're not into those super soft, powdery shadows you're not going to like her formula and honestly I'm not um it's a formula I can work with I'm a makeup artist I know how to make them work but I don't know I just don't prefer formulas like that I think I'm 
just don't prefer them. But it's all about preference, you know. I don't find her formula to be the most user-friendly, beginner-friendly. You kind of got to know what you're doing to be able to work with them. But that's just the nature of ABH products. If you don't like that formula, don't buy it. Don't complain about it. When you buy her palettes, you know you're getting that formula. So I know I'm getting this formula. It's not my favorite formula, but the way ABH does their palettes is amazing. Their color schemes, their color stories, top of the line, one of the best in the industry by far. They're always unique, always so well thought out and makes so much sense. And I mean, this palette really does fall nothing short. This is an amazing color story. It's different. It's unique. It's outside what is in the industry right now. This subculture prism, they're all amazing. And even though I'm complaining about the formula of ABH, the soft glam is one of my favorite palettes. It's one of my favorite to do when I do wedding makeup for every day, for me, for travel. I love soft glam. But the brand itself, they're just what they do with these palettes. So good. So really quickly, I am going to kind of show you and talk about what I did with the look. So the first thing that I did, of course, was I took the base color and I kind of set underneath my eyebrows and all over my lid. And then I went in with the shade Love on a blender brush and I just kind of blended that into my crease as the transition shade. It blended very nice. Uh, it does have that weird shimmer that isn't mentioned um, in the color description, but... I personally didn't have any issues with it. Then I went in with the shade Soul, and this is when things got a little weird, because this is like the most unique color in this palette. So of course I was super duper excited for it. Um, it didn't really look how it looked in the pan. Um, it was a lot darker and almost weirdly darker in places. It just, it was a little finicky. You had to really kind of work with it, but you know, I worked with it. I did what I did with it. Uh, yeah. No, I'm not going to talk about that shade for too much longer. Then I went in with the shade Celestial on my finger and I pressed that over top. The shade isn't quite as foiled as the other colors in the top row, but it's really pretty and I thought it layered very beautifully over Soul. Then on a small brush, I took the shade Wild Child and I pressed that into my inner corner. Honestly, one of my favorite inner corner colors for a pur purple look. It's just so beautiful. It's kind of sheer, and if you put it on the lid, like as a solo color, meh, I think it needs a base color, but with a base color, this as a lid topper would be gorgeous. And then on my lower lash line, I took Passion, which is the color I could have done without in this palette, but I did use that to define my lower lash line. And then I took a Drama on a brush, and just to like play with some color some more, and whoop, don't use this with a brush. The color will get everywhere. It's chunky. It's no bueno, no bueno. Um, also, one thing I would like to mention about the formula of these kind of foiled shades, I don't think they will work well with a brush at all. They're very, very soft and almost chunky, which I personally don't like. I mean, it is just a specific formula though. That's like the name of the game. Like that's just the type of formula it is. It's super soft. Even when you use your fingers to go in, it gets really chunky. And then the best way to use it is to kind of smear it across your lid to get that full foiled effect. But girl, you're gonna get some fall out. So like I said, formula you kind of got to work with but you work with it to get the gorgeous metallic foiled look that you get when you swatch with it like it is what it is if you like what you see in the pan you have to work for it a little bit that's just the nature of the formula all negativity aside i love this palette i think it's really inspiring do i think it's the best formula in the world no can i work with it yeah i think the color scheme is just so great that I'm willing to work with the formula. And that being said, like these mattes down here, they are so consistent with the Modern Renaissance formula. So if you like that formula, I just don't. I'm weird. I don't know. Anyways, I'm blabbering on too much. You guys have probably watched 100,000 reviews on this anyways. But yeah, it's a beautiful palette. I like it. I like purple and I like what I did with it. <laughs> So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Remember to comment down below, subscribe to my channel, and like this video. And I will catch you guys later. Have a great day, guys. Bye.